New Year and let's continue with our series of videos. From your feedback, it seems to me that they are interesting, so let's continue along the lines of what we started last year. This time I want to talk to you about how centrifugal pumps work. Centrifugal pumps are hydraulic machines typically used to move liquids. The operation of centrifugal pumps remains unchanged whether it is pumping water, oil or any other type of fluid. Essentially, it is a kind of rotary pump that can be directly connected to a motor, connected via a coupling, constructed with various materials, but I'm not interested in delving into these specifics. I'm interested in discussing the physical workings of a centrifugal pump. Why is that? Why are we frequently asked questions about how these pumps operate, that is, how a pump must function to be in a curve, that is, to operate correctly? If we look at a typical performance curve of a centrifugal pump, for simplicity here we will take a curve of a water pump, but it can be applicable to any type of fluid that we are going to pump. As you can see, the flow rate and prevalence vary, therefore the maximum and minimum pressure that can be provided by the centrifugal pump vary depending on the flow rate and vice versa. Let's say that the two values are more or less inversely proportional. At maximum flow rate corresponds the minimum pressure, vice versa the maximum pressure corresponds to the minimum flow rate. Until reaching a maximum pressure of the pump that we will have when we have the mouth completely closed, that is, when we fully close the outlet of the pump, ensuring no leakage occurs. Very often our customers tell us, oh, there is the pump that makes a lot of effort because it is pushing the water with a very high pressure. Now let's examine the absorption curve of the electric motor of the pump. As you can observe, the electrical absorption of the pump motor is precisely contrary to the pump pressure, to the pressure generated by the pump, that is at the highest pressure, we observe the lowest electrical absorption. Conversely, when we have the lowest pressure, we experience the highest absorption because of the behavior of the centrifugal pump. When we have the minimum pressure, the pump is causing the maximum water flow, thus resulting in the maximum weight, the maximum kilograms of water it is capable of moving at this moment. And this obviously causes the engine to absorb more. The engine consumes more electrical current because it is working harder. Due to the design of the centrifugal pump, when it moves a larger amount of water with low head, it consumes more energy and works harder, exerting greater effort. It's a bit like if we ourselves had to carry a heavy weight for a very short distance, but that heavy weight makes us exert a lot of effort. Now, what occurs? If we do not restrict this drop in pressure, we allow the pump to operate unrestrictedly, we will even operate beyond the curve and achieve the thermal intervention to safeguard the pump motor. Why is that? Why basically the centrifugal pump, while having a limitation upwards, that is beyond a certain pressure it cannot go if it does not have a closed mouth, but still cannot exceed that pressure, downwards in terms of flow, it can transport more water than the one for which the electric motor was designed. And this causes an out-of-curve stress, an out-of-curve stress of the electric motor that absorbs more electrical energy and the thermal protection of the motor intervenes, otherwise the motor burns. I frequently mention this example, it's similar to loading the cargo of a truck onto a Vespa B. In practice, it may be able to handle the weight, but as soon as it moves it by a meter, it breaks because although it can handle the weight, the engine is unable to pull it. This is an empirical explanation of what can occur to a centrifugal pump when it operates outside its curve. To overcome this inconvenience, we typically install a control valve on our systems. If there are no downstream pressure losses that cause the pump to deviate from its performance curve, we will partially close the control valve to increase the pressure. This ensures that the pump operates with the correct and designed water flow rate, preventing the motor from deviating from its performance curve. I hope I have been clear. If not, feel free to leave comments on the video and I will respond in a clearer way. Thank you and see you in the next video.